currently in the studio recording a five song EP called Carry the Wounded. And uh, the title track, Carry the Wounded, talks about uh, how I think all of us have known someone at some point, or maybe we've even been there ourselves, uh, that have totally fallen away spiritually and just uh, basically said goodbye to their walk with the Lord. And uh, this song is hopefully an encouragement to people not to give up, A, on their friends, and sometimes the people that we think are the furthest from God and that there's no chance of any reconciliation with, uh, with their maker. But sometimes they've had so many people just blame them and say, man, what a lousy Christian, or look at, look at that person, there's no hope for them. And uh, sometimes they're, they're that, that close to returning to the Lord, they just need some encouragement. Hi, this is Victor Macias, and I'm here at Mixing Lab, and we're still in the process of recording our new EP called Carry the Wounded. And I just actually got finished with my last bass track, and uh, we're all pretty happy with the stuff that's coming out so far, so it's very really cool. Um, people often ask me about my influences and uh, the kind of stuff that I've listened to over the years to uh, develop my style, or um, if I can even say style. Uh, just my, my technique or whatever. Um, growing up, I listened to a lot of uh, early 80s uh, British metal stuff, you know, your Iron Maiden, your uh, Judas Priest type stuff, and Saxon, stuff like that, and a lot of the uh, early 80s British punk also, like this chart in GBH. Um, and uh, a lot of the late 70s uh, progressive rock also, King Crimson and ELP, I love both of those bands a whole lot, and there's some really cool bass stuff going on, a lot of distorted stuff. Um, Rush, obviously, uh, more progressive stuff uh, over the years and, and more recently. Um, but I just kind of use a lot of those influences to uh, kind of get different ideas for songs, and um, oftentimes a song will just call for a very basic line, uh, something that just kind of locks in with the drums, and uh, uh, carries the rhythm. And other times there's, there's chances to, uh, to fan out a little bit and do something a little more elaborate. But uh, every song, I think, is, is definitely different and needs to be approached in a different way so that you're not always playing 800 notes uh, per measure or uh, whatever. You know, use whatever uh, the song calls for and uh, always try to enhance the whole picture as opposed to stepping out and making yourself uh, the, uh, the object of attention. Over the last seven years, Tourniquet's had some big changes, I think. Uh, one of those changes has been personnel. We've had two members uh, leave the group, and uh, we've had, I guess more importantly, two, I think, really important key uh, additions to the band. Aaron and Luke are both fantastic additions to Tourniquet, and uh, over the last year and a half, we've had a lot of fun, uh, both in the studio and on the road with those guys, and uh, I look forward to a, uh, a real fun 1995 playing out live. Uh, when I meet people after the shows and whatnot, or just, you know, wherever on the street and whatnot, you know, they know I'm in Tourniquet, I think the best part about it is hearing that the music really is having an impact, and that we're not just spinning our wheels and kidding ourselves about what we're trying to do, and it's, it's good to hear that efforts that we put forth on, on, uh, on the record, you know, they, they're having the desired result. I joined Tourniquet in June of 94, this year, and I had originally sent a tape in when they were looking for a singer, and I got in touch with Gary over the phone, and um, although they were impressed with the demo tape, it wasn't exactly what they were looking for, and they got Luke, who's a far better singer anyways. And from that's originally how I got in touch with the band. And a year later, they were looking for a guitarist, and Gary called me up. They had just finished their last album, Vanishing Lessons, and they needed a replacement before they went out on tour. And so I drove down on a Thursday to audition, and drove back home the next day, and Gary had left him a message to call him. And when I got back to him, he said, you know, we want you down the next day. And so I drove back down and worked on the 
songs, the newer ones that I hadn't heard were probably the hardest, but between Gary, Ted, and Victor, they made it real easy learning the songs. And from there, we went out on the road. you know, 
first of all, the word and the gospel to people, but also just, just to meet different people from across the nation and even up in Canada, which the people are really nice. And it was just a lot of fun. As uh, many of you know who followed tourniquet from the early days, stop the bleeding, cycle surgery, etc. Um, they probably know that I'm the drummer, A, and that uh, B, I do quite a bit of the songwriting. And I'm very thankful for uh, whatever gifts the Lord has given me in that area. And uh, there's nothing like the thought that people enjoy our music so much that they check out the lyrics because that's, that's what it's all about. If they're not into the music, the chances that the lyrics are really going to speak to them are, are not very good. And uh, so we're really, really thankful that uh, people have been into the music. And it's caused a lot of people all over the world to uh, get into the Word of God. We really uh, want people to know that uh, there is no substitute for spending time in the Word every day. Uh, when we're on the road, we, uh, you know, as well as playing shows, we, we like to take time out and do fun stuff. And uh, this one particular time, we were staying with some friends of Ted's in uh, the Chicago area, and uh, they taught us how to use various household items to make a combustible device out of a Pepsi bottle. And uh, we set it off in front of their house, and we just we freaked out the entire neighborhood. It was, it was a loud. I, I didn't realize that a, a, a two-liter bottle could make so much noise. And that, that was. I would have to say that's my favorite road story. That was a blast. Oh, Rick, you better hurry up. Oh, 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 that one's gonna go. <laughs> Look at Perry. And watch how big they get. Well, you gotta zoom in on it. Okay, the Someone's motor gotta car the motor home. Home. Oh, the motor home. <laughs> okay, and right after cleanup, <laughs> it won't go that far, will it? Today? Oh, a car's coming. Where? Where's that alarm more? <laughs> Rick. Yeah, yeah, as soon as it starts going like right this. In on, on, well, I suppose the little one first. Yeah, as soon as it starts going over, then you know that it's going to go. Okay, the big one. Check it out. Big one. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh. A&W. Here we go. Oh. Yes. <laughs> that was... <laughs> and the little one? Nothing. Oh, oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Oh, oh, oh. big. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, my gosh. <laughs> that little one was louder! Yeah. Alright guys, we gotta pick up. Okay. That, that was so yeah. true. That was so true. Hey, where's the other room? That was the room as a joke. That little one was tops. <laughs>
Yeah, you think it's got tubes. <laughs> yeah, one more shirt. Uh, if you don't have one, then we went in the gig bag. Okay, this is a short bag. That'll do. I just need to get from out of here into the gorilla here. Thank you. The secret of tourniquet's humongous guitar sound. This and our great producer, Jim Faraki, the Israeli monster. There's one. There's another one. Bands have put down much of my despair. Bands 
stronger commitment to God, Christian, than ever. And uh, it's pretty exciting to be involved in Christian music. The whole music scene in general right now is at a kind of a strange crossroads. There's an incredible melting pot of styles going on right now. And I think for Tourniquet, I think whoever has gotten into Tourniquet in the past got into us because perhaps we share the same kind of music influences. But we've never been a band that kind of stands still and just to do one thing. And I don't think we'd ever go so far off the edge that we somehow alienated the people that have been in the tournament. Yeah, that's what's right. today's date? 